There's nothing wrong with taking pride in your gaming habits. That said, there are still some devious, disturbing, and downright diabolical games out there that you might be better off enjoying on your own. Ah, oh, look, a cute little dating sim game where you flirt with nice girls, read their poetry, and generally try to navigate the romantic shoals of high school. Doki Doki Literature Club isn't so bad, right? Hang on a minute. That poetry the girls write gets awfully creepy. And one of them does seem to have a strange obsession with knives. And does that one girl somehow know that you're streaming on Twitch? Holy cow, did the game just delete my save file? What begins as cutesy fluff eventually descends into a nightmarish hell of psychological manipulation, discomfort, and dread. Doki Doki Literature Club has been called a genius game by The Verge, one that will disturb you in profound ways. You don't want anyone watching over your shoulder as the poor girls will fall into madness and despair. Play this one on your own, with headphones on and the lights off. It's hard not to feel like every quest in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt exists in some moral grey area where, no matter how you choose to solve things, some undeserving soul winds up losing, or much, much worse. Unlike many games that offer moral decisions where there are fairly obvious good and bad paths, The Witcher 3 allows you to see everyone's side and justifications for their actions, then forces you to choose who is most in the right. You see, Witcher, the world's not black and white, it's shades of all kinds. It adds to the realism and world building, but can also make you feel like a total jerk. PC Gamer highlighted one of the most memorable quest lines in the game, involving a character named the Bloody Baron. Pavel Sasko, the quest designer, told them its inspiration for the quest. I saw families destroyed by alcoholism and violence. I saw parents fighting with each other and beating their kids, but they were also in love and loyal to their family. The moral complexity helps The Witcher 3's story transcend typical gaming tropes, but also can make others, especially non-gamers and those who dig a less emotionally taxing gaming experience, question just why you chose to help one character while punishing another. Just look at the Steam responses to the quest involving a powerful curse called the Nithing. The different reasons players give for killing one character Character versus another are a fascinating psychological look at how people play games. It also might convince others watching you play that you should never be allowed to make moral decisions. Alien Isolation is an absolutely terrifying experience, pitting you against a super smart AI xenomorph as it stalks you through a derelict spaceship. One of the ways it manages to be so scary is because it does not force limits onto your character. You have weapons and you can move around freely and find places to hide. The scary part is simple, the xenomorph just happens to be much better at hunting than you are at hiding. Unlike many horror games where the scariest moments are the same for everyone thanks to scripted set pieces, Alien Isolation lives and breathes by the unpredictability of its big bad. Reading Steam reviews about the game's scariest moments is fascinating. They're all unique to each player's game experience. Sandbox horror doesn't always work, but Alien Isolation will have you hiding under desks for minutes at a time, just hoping the Xenomorph hears something else and goes away. Holding your breath and gripping your controller in fear is no way to show off how brave you are to other people in the room with you. Let's get straight to the point, The Evil Within 2 will make you wish you'd worn your brown pants at every playthrough. Sure, the game's overcomplicated plot isn't the most enthralling storyline in a video game, but honestly, the narrative is almost secondary to the jump scares and tense atmosphere that the game creates. Watching someone play a scary game is never as terrifying as actually playing it, so you are always going to be on the losing end of The Evil Within 2 set pieces if you aren't playing it on your own. The Evil Within 2 is a game about maximizing psychological scares with the kind of intense, horrifying imagery that'll have you shrieking like a nine-year-old while your best friends heckle you from the couch. Don't be that guy. Before the 2018 PlayStation 4 reboot of God of War, Kratos started out in the original series as a sadistic monster of a man, or a demigod if you want to get technical, and he only got worse as the stories went on. These games are full of over-the-top violence inspired more or less by Kratos' unhinged anger without much room for, you know, any actual emotional growth. These violent tendencies became increasingly ridiculous as the games went on, culminating with 2010's God of War 3. While still a fun and satisfying game, Kotaku summed it up best when they wrote that Kratos' ultra-violent shtick had grown claustrophobic as the game gave you no other way to solve your problems besides tearing people apart. Why? Because Kratos, that's why! No! 
Luckily, 2018's God of War reigns in most of the absurdity and helps to humanize Kratos, showing another side of the hyper-violent anti-hero. Hitting the reset button seems to have paid off. Metacritic shows that the game has garnered almost universally glowing reviews. Speaking of panic-inducing games, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard helped to reinvent the series after it descended into the total silliness in the fifth and sixth entries. The Baker family, led by Patriarch Jack, are a big part of what makes the game so successful and totally freaking terrifying. These sadistic, cannibalistic monsters will stalk you throughout Resident Evil 7's runtime, and they're full of nasty tricks that will make your skin crawl and your pulse race. <laughs> Still not scared? Try out running them in virtual reality using Sony's PSVR peripheral. Just don't do it in front of anybody you respect. Strapping a VR headset and flailing about a room already makes you look a bit like a goon. Couple that with the absolute horror of fleeing from an axe-wielding Jack Baker, and we're suddenly talking about the type of fear and panic that will make people never speak to you again. In fact, CNET even writes that virtual reality is too immersive for a game as scary as RE7. Maintain your dignity. You don't want to play Resident Evil 7 on PSVR with anyone else in the room. It would be tough to talk about some of the scariest games out there without mentioning Amnesia Dark Descent. Despite some notoriously cringy cover art, Amnesia can turn even the bravest gamer into a panicky baby in no time at all. And some of the most successful YouTubers in the world, like PewDiePie, got their start by streaming this terrifying game. By giving you little option to deal with monsters besides running and hiding, Amnesia keeps things tense and ready lets up. If you've never tried it and think you can handle anything, load up the prison, storage, or Quiet levels and try to get through them. You won't be feeling brave for long. And you don't want your friends and loved ones to see you weeping like a baby, do you? Bioshock is full of intense violence and disturbing imagery, but it's one moral question posed pretty early on that differentiates the men from the monsters. Just how far will you go in a quest for power? This is presented in the form of Little Sisters, young girls who collect Adam, the lifeblood of Andrew Ryan's underwater world of Rapture. Each little sister is followed by a terrifying protector called a Big Daddy, and of course, you are tasked with taking them out. This is heartbreaking enough, as each little sister is psychologically bonded to their Big Daddy, and they sob and grieve once you are victorious. Once the little sister is on her own, the game presents you with another moral quandary. You can choose to rescue them from their fate, freeing them from the parasitic relationship they are in. This grants you a small amount of Adam, which you can use to increase your character's abilities. You can also choose to kill the little sisters, which grants you significantly more Adam. Remember, creepy as they are, these are little girls who skip, sing, and play games. For God's sake, they call their big daddies Mr. Bubbles. It's almost sweet enough to rot your teeth. Look, Mr. Bubbles, Adam! Maybe you should kick everyone out of the room before you make your way into Rapture. Hopefully, you can live with yourself afterwards. Bioware games generally do not have the subtle moral compass of something like The Witcher 3, but the Dragon Age franchise still pushes you to the limit with a lot of your decisions. One of the biggest options available in all of the games is which character you are going to attempt to romance. You only picked one, right? Because there are several different options, and you certainly wouldn't want your partner to see you playing the field, would you? Even though the sex and romance options draw a lot of the big headlines, there are plenty of other extremely tough choices to make. Iron Bull's plotline involving his mercenary company stands out, and some Redditors claim to have had a very hard time choosing between Alistair and Hawk. Regardless of how you play through the Dragon Age series, there is no doubt that you will wind up agonizing over and regretting some of the decisions you make. You may reveal some sides to yourself that you don't want out there. Look, we get it, the Dark Souls games and their Bloodborne cousin are hard. Really hard. Sure, with enough patience and forward planning, you can get through the game just fine and triumph over even the most difficult opponents. But think about it, is patience one of your virtues? The first time a basic skeleton warrior kills you, you'll chalk it up to bad luck. The second time, you'll blame your controller. By the fifth time, you'll be chucking that controller across the room. Then comes the imminent onset of table flipping, couch punching, and eventually rage quitting. By the time you swear off the series forever, you'll look more like a silverback gorilla than a human being. It's not a sight you'd want to inflict on anybody. Worse, it's not how you'd like anybody to remember you. Better to be alone, where you can curse the screen in peace. Who knows, maybe after you stew for a little bit, you'll even come back and try to play again.
Maybe.